Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily here on MLSsoccer.com. Josh Weisenhunt joined here by Greg Lawless. Greg, happy Friday. Thank you very much. It is a happy Friday. It certainly is. And we got you know a lot. Why, why is that? Because Saturday is tomorrow. Uh-huh. And we got a lot going on on Saturday. Eight matches for you coming up. Let's start with the three biggest questions heading into the weekend. One I had, can FC Dallas keep up this hot start at the top of the league? It's pretty amazing what they're doing right now. They're going up to Vancouver. Not the easiest place to always get a victory. This is going to be a track meet. If you talk about the two fastest teams in MLS, these are probably the two of them. And the way Dallas are playing, though, the way they can finish, Blas Perez up top, able to put the ball away. David Ferreira showing his old stuff that saw him win the MVP a couple of years ago. Now, if Vancouver can turn it around, maybe it's a Darren Maddox that comes in there and sneaks in behind that defense. But the way Dallas's defense holds up, Man, they're going to be so strong, very, very tough to beat, even for Vancouver and their speed. Two teams in very different places right now. Going to be fun to watch. FC Dallas, of course, at the top of the Western Conference in Vancouver, below the red line. That one's Beware six... of the red line, by the way, all season long. <laughs> Stay away from the red line. That one's 6 Stay above the red line. You don't want to... <laughs> that one's 6 p.m. Eastern on Univision Deportes. You can also catch it on MLS Live. Moving on, Greg, Portland Timbers, five games unbeaten. Are they for real? Are they for real? That's a good question. I, I think that they are for real, certainly as a team that's going to be contending for the playoffs. I think the way that uh, Caleb Porter has this team playing, they feel confident. With Ryan Johnson up top and feeling confident, that's great. Will Johnson running things in the midfield. However, on Saturday, they're going up against Sporting Kansas City, who now finally got a little bit of rest after that uh, two-game stretch that they had last weekend. I think that loss in Los Angeles really stung for Sporting. They knew they were tired, and it just didn't work out for them. Now they come home. The cauldron's going to be rocking and rolling or bubbling over, if you will. And I think that with Graham Zussi looking to push as much as possible, I'm still waiting for CJ Sapong to find his rhythm. I don't think he's really looked like the old CJ Sapong that we saw in the first couple of years of his career. So can he find that rhythm? That's a big one for Sporting. Yeah, it certainly is. Speaking of strikers, moving on to the third big question. RSL and LA on the stream of the week presented by El Himidor. Robbie Keane and Landon Donovan are both doubts right now. Which, who do you think is more important for them to have in the lineup on Saturday? You know, the way things went with Landon Donovan last weekend, I think he is more important than they need. Obviously, what Robbie Keane brings with his ability to finish, his ability to hold the ball up and everything, that's huge for them. But Landon Donovan brings them that presence on the outside, especially on the counterattack. And when they're on the road, that's when they're at their best that way. So. I think there's also this sort of, you know, almost like a psychological lift that they get when they see Landon step on the field. You could also end up having just Jack McBean play up as that target man and do some of the work that Keane can do. He's not necessarily able to turn a defender the way Keane does, but so I think in this one, I think it's Landon, especially because I think he might be in the heads of Real Salt Lake. That's a big deal as well. Yeah, certainly had plenty of success against them last year. That one is 9 p.m. Eastern. You can watch it on MLSsoccer.com. The stream of the week presented by El Himidor. Lots more questions, lots more news coming out later on the site today. Check it all out on MLSsoccer.com. And some player acquisition news for you on this Friday morning. Toronto FC, Greg, making a splash. 21-year-old Matias Laba signs from Argentina. He's going to be a young, designated player. What do you think? Yeah, this is a, an interesting player. He's coming up from Argentinos Juniors, Argentinos Juniors down in Argentina. Played for the U-20s for Argentina. He's an energetic sort of linking midfielder, a little bit of a holding midfielder type. Think about it like a Juninho in some ways. Not afraid to push into the attack, but more of that guy. You're going to play the ball into him. He's going to turn, start to serve serve the ball out wide. This is maybe, I think, that player that they really needed there. The guy who can sit right next to Luis Silva and provide some of the defensive work. Jeremy Hall did pretty well last week and has shown that he might be able to play that position too, but I think that Laba brings him that little extra bit of class. Yes, certainly. Laba, Hall, Silva. It's going to be fun to see how that one shakes out as far as that position battle. No word on whether or not Laba will be available on Saturday, of course, but Toronto FC do have a huge game at home to New York. That one's 2 p.m. Eastern. You can watch it on TSN or ML us live. A couple things for you before we get out of here today. Be sure to check out Extra Time Radio. It's up on the site right now. Great guest yesterday, Roger Espinosa, joined the crew to talk about, turns out, a lot of different things. Great. Well, what a surprise that he can talk about multiple <laughs> things. I mean, he does talk about Wigan Athletic and his time there with EPL. Also, a little bit about the U.S. Honduras game. Big one coming up in June for those two clubs. Yes, certainly. Also, AT&T Gold Week. The winner has been revealed. Javi Morales. Make sure you check it out. Nice little build-up play. Pip Jack McInerney right there at the end. So well done to the RSL fans Darn. who voted for their man, Darn. Javi. How and can, finally... How can Jackarito not get it? I don't know. Jack per, Macarito, I'm with you on that one. Gonna, he needs a nickname. Well, Jack Mac's a good nickname. I'll go with that. It certainly is. I think we can roll with that. I'm like president of the Jack Mac fan club. I he know. must think it's a little weird. To I, think be most, I think most people are aware of that at this point, Greg. That 
that you are the president of the Jack Mac founding member. Also, Greg, how's your fantasy team? Do you have Jack Mac in your fantasy uh, of team? Of course I have him on my fantasy team. Captain? But, uh, yeah, well... Captain Jack. Yes, he's, he's Captain Jack. He's, um, but my fantasy team is actually not that good. I, I have made some mistakes in my midfield a couple of times. But my three-goal Monty team is pretty impressive. In fact, I'm going to point out that I am in the 100th percentile because what? I'm in eighth place overall in three-goal Monty. Guy knows his goal scorers. I do. Jack Mack. Seriously, Fantasy and 3 Goal Monty. Make sure you pay a visit over there at fantasy.mlssoccer.com. Get everything set up for the weekend. That does it for us. We'll talk to you guys on Monday.